Hello everyone, welcome to KJB Believers, and today we're going to be doing a Discord Bible study slash sermon, Bible study slash sermon. So what are we going to be going through here? We're going to be going through a passage here that is going to resonate with what's going on today. All right, wait a second here. I was just chewing big red gum, so excuse me. <laughs> but we're going to go through a passage here that's going to resonate for, for all of us today and what we're going through in our lives, right? And also what's going on in this world. Because this world is just doing the things of this world. The people of this world, even professing Christians, right? Either saved or lost. They're, they just want to go by with this world and just listen to the counsel of this world. And we're going to see a good example here. We're going to draw a spiritual application here. So, so let's turn on our Bibles to Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. Let's turn there. Isaiah 30. All right. Uh, God here is speaking to the children of Israel because they were putting their trust in Egypt. Now, of course, there's something we can apply to today because Egypt is a type of the world, right? So notice what the Bible says here. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1, the Bible says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with their with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and trust. And, uh, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt be your, uh, your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit, but ashamed and also reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come the young and the old lion, the viper, the firing flying serpent, they will carry their riches upon their shoulders of young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to the people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Notice this. Verse 8. Now go write it before them in a table. Note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Notice what we just read. These are lying children, rebellious children, who are trusting in the shadow of Egypt. They're trusting, and in, in, in for our spiritual application, these are people who are trusting on what this world can offer them. They're putting their trust in the counsel of this world. And of course, for another application, this goes to the children of God who are relying on corrupt manuscripts, which come from where? Alexandria, Egypt, for their new perversions. That are out there. Perverted Bibles if you will. Hmm. Let's dissect these verses. Let's go to verse 2. That walk to go down into Egypt. And have not asked at my mouth. To strengthen themselves in the strength of Egypt. And to trust. In the shadow of Egypt. Notice. These people have not asked. At the Lord's mouth. They have not went to the word of God. They have not went to the mouth of God to find out what to do. They have not seek the counsel of God. They haven't. Want to see a good example of this? Let's see a good example of this. Because if we see an example of this, we can see how we can avoid this type of thing. Let's turn on our Bibles to Joshua. All right. Joshua chapter 9. We're going to start with, uh, yeah, we're going to start with uh, verse verse uh, 3. So the context here, uh, Joshua was told by God to slaughter everybody, to slaughter everyone who would dwell in the promised land so they could take it over, right? And God told them, hey, do not leave anybody alive. You're supposed to kill all of them. Now, that's the command of God to them. 
Notice what happens. Verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and clattered upon their feet and old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto the camp of Gilgal and said unto him to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Preaventure ye dwell among us. How shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Lord thy God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take victuals with you for, your, for the journey. Go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make ye a league with us. This is our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And behold, and, and these bottles of wine, which we filled, were new, and behold, they be rent. These are our garments and our shoes become old by reason of a very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Verse 15, And Joshua made peace with them, and made a league with them, to let them live, and the princes of the congregation swore unto them. So, let's recap on what just happened, right? These Gibeonites heard what Joshua was doing, right? They knew they were next. So you know what they did? They took old, old clothing, they took old bread, they took old food, and went into Joshua and straight up lied to him. Lied to him and said that they were people from a long country who traveled very far. And Joshua, you know, he he started, you know, asking the right questions, you know, this and that. He asked, we, uh, and Joshua said unto them, who are ye? Verse 8, who are ye and from whence come ye? Notice that they dodged the question. They dodged the question. They did not answer where they came from. Notice they dodged the question. Joshua should have kept asking further. In fact, he should have sought the counsel of the Lord, but he didn't. Right? What you're going to encounter today in this world, you're going to come people dressed in, in ministers' clothing. You're going to say, we are servants of the Lord. We are servants of the Lord. We come to minister unto you. And notice, when you ask them a Bible, an honest Bible question that goes against what they believe in, they'll dodge the question. Same thing. In fact, when you, uh, when you talk to these people who say, oh, they have older manuscripts and so forth, you ask them, Oh, so you, you got the original manuscripts in your hand? Notice, they'll dodge the question. Because they don't have the original manuscripts in their hand. They profess to claim something they do not have. Ain't that something? Same concept. Alright, that's what you'll notice here. Want to know how not to be deceived? You need to seek the counsel of the Lord. Now, you might say, well, well where do I find the counsel of the Lord? What do I find it? Well, not in Egypt. You won't find it in Egypt, that's for sure. You won't find it there. You want to know where you'll find it? This old King James Bible I'm holding in my hand right now. This is where you'll find it. This is where the Council of the Lord is at. This is the manuscripts that come from Antioch and Syria, not Egypt. This is where you can find the Council of the Lord. But it's up to you if you want to seek it. Not many people do. In fact, they would rather be lied to their face by fakers who wear false clothing to deceive. The choice is yours, my friend. The choice is yours. Have you asked a, a counsel of the mouth of the Lord? Or have you bought into the, the lie that is being propagated today? Whether you be for new manuscripts or whether you be a person of this world 
you know, some people are like, you know, they try to figure out what's best for their family. And instead of going to the Bible, they'll run to the, their co-worker or their best friend who is just a lost heathen. Ain't that something? Are you seeking counsel from the mouth of the Lord? That's something only you can answer. Only you can answer that. Let's go back to our, to our uh, main text here. Let's keep reading in verse 3. Verse 3. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. The strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Let's turn to Proverbs. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. We're going to turn to verse 2. Notice. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Notice what I just said. What you seek to be first, your pride, in this case, then cometh shame. Who do you lift up in your life? You see, these people were lifting up Pharaoh. Pharaoh was their pride. And guess what? It was their shame. What do you lift up? You see, because if you lift up, if your pride is in this, in, in this word of God, if your pride is in what Jesus did, or what Jesus did on the cross, you'll never be ashamed. It's impossible. You'll never be ashamed. In fact, that same passage said in Isaiah 30, verse 3, uh, Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and what? And the trust in the shadow of Egypt be your confusion. Hmm. If you trust on this world, you will be confused. You see, people are running around saying that, you know, men are women and men, uh, men, and men are women and women are men, right? That's pretty confusing, man. In fact, you can walk down the street, depending on the area you live, and you might see an alien from outer space. A tranny transvestite from outer space. It's crazy what this world can offer you. Confusion is what it is. You usually get confused. I just saw a, a video the other day of a guy who walked into the store. And he walked in with a camera, and and the guy and the woman was telling him to go away from the campus or whatever. But the guy said, "Oh, don't worry, I self-identify as a camera." And she's like, "Oh, okay, then you're in." You see that garbage? You see that garbage that's going on today? It's confusion, man. We don't know what's going on. It's utter confusion. Let's see what the Bible has to say on confusion here. This world will give you confusion. I'm sorry about that. This world will give you confusion. That's what will happen. But where do you get, where do you don't get confusion? Where, where does that not happen? Let's see. Let's see. You want to not be confused? Let's turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. The Bible says, what? For God it is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of saints. So notice, who's not the author of confusion? God. What is he the author of? Peace. Want to find true peace in your life that passes all understanding? Now I'm not talking about the peace of this world. The peace of this world is a piece of junk. The peace of this world offers confusion. What I'm talking about is the peace of God that God can give you once you get saved by trusting the blood of Jesus for your salvation. Do you have that peace? The past is all understanding. I'll tell you something. Once I got saved, the first night after I got saved, I was so in peace. I slept like a baby, man. No worries. Do you have that peace? Or are you confused? You see, this world will confuse you. This world can mess you up. In James 3.16, let's turn there. James 3.16. Notice what the Bible says. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Hmm. When you envy someone, when there is strife, there is confusion. You won't find that with God. But guess what? I mean, uh, you won't find envying with God, but you will find peace. That's what you'll have. Peace in your heart that you're saved and you know you're going to heaven. Do you have that peace that passes all understanding? I hope so. It can only be found in one place. Notice what the Bible said. Let's go back to Isaiah real quick. Let's go back to Isaiah. Let me find it real quick. Isaiah 30. Let's look at verse 8. 
notice what notice what Isaiah is told here. Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Notice what notice what he's told here. He's told to write it in a book, to note it in a book. Right? What book? Hmm. What are we told to do about this book? Let's turn to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her made, for my mouth it hath commanded, and the Spirit hath gathered him. The Bible tells us to seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Which book? What is that talking about? It didn't say manuscripts, right? It didn't say original autographs. It said a book, right? The Lord has a book that is perfect without error. Do you have the book of the Lord? Or you don't? You see, I'm not here to, to cause debates or nothing. If you're trying to get your manuscripts from Egypt, that's up to you. But the Bible calls you rebellious if you do. If you trust on Egypt, on that matter. Because the Lord... He has a book that does not come from Egypt. Do you have it? There's only one. Do you have it? Something to think about for sure, right? Something to think about. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. You see, you know what's the problem with today? People don't want to read the book. People don't want to read it. In fact, those people do not believe that there is a book out there that is perfect. That it would be called heretics, but those people do not believe there is a book. Most of them won't even memorize scripture. Because when the new translation comes out, oh well, we have to shift to the new translation now. No, I can memorize the book of the Lord because it never changes, amen? It never changes, it's always the same. Do you have a book? Do you read the book? You see, many people get these books, right? The book of the Lord, the King James Bible, many people get it, but they don't read it. They don't seek the counsel of the Lord. They don't seek it. What are you seeking then? You think your YouTube is going gonna, is gonna to do the job? You think your internet is going to do the job? What? You think your friend is going to give you proper advice to live your life? Oh, you think the pastor will? I mean, the pastor might be using the right book, but... He's not your final authority. Do you read the book? Or you don't? The Bible tells us to seek out of the book of the Lord. And read. That's what the Bible says. Let's keep reading here. Let's read in uh, verse 9. Let's go back to Isaiah 30. Verse 9. The Bible says that this is a rebellious people. Rebellious people. The rebellious is what they are. Let's turn uh, the cross reference here is Isaiah 65 verse 2. Let's check that out. Isaiah 65 verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walketh in the way that was not good after their own thoughts. Notice what has happened. God has spread out his hands all day. He's willing for you to come back and fellowship with him. If you're saved, he wants you to go back and fellowship with him. If you're lost, he wants you to get saved. He has spread out his hands all day. He has done everything possible. He's probably sent you missionaries. He's probably sent you video after video talking about him and in your feed. He's done all he can. He has spread out his hands all day unto a rebellious people. Will you stop being rebellious for once and seek the counsel of the Lord by reading the book of the Lord, which the Lord gave for once? Let's keep reading here in uh, Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verse 9. That this is a rebellious people lying children. Children. That will not hear the law of the Lord. They won't hear it. In fact, 
I can try, you know, that's what I sometimes do in street preaching. I, I try to proclaim the book, right? Which in this, it also includes the law. I try to proclaim, proclaim the Bible on the streets. But usually they don't want that. Nobody wants that. You see, the natural man doesn't want that. But guess what? The Bible tells us to proclaim. The Bible tells us to do so. And we see an example here also with, uh, with Ezekiel. Let's turn to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 2. Verses 3. We're going to start verses 3 to 8. The Bible says in Ezekiel 2 verse 3, And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. You see, that's what a, a good street preacher does. He proclaims the word of God. This is what the Bible says, right? Verse 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like unto that house, Open thy mouth and eat what uh, eat what I give thee. So notice, what can make us rebellious if we don't do what God says? If you're saved, child of God, the Bible told you in Second Corinthians that you're an ambassador, you're a minister of the gospel, and you're supposed to share that gospel with other people. But how, what happens if you don't share the gospel of salvation? Notice what the Bible just said, verse eight. Hear what I say unto thee: Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat what i give thee we're supposed to digest the word of god you see because people lost people they're impudent they're stiff-hearted they listen they'll they'll try to say all types of stuff to you but the bible says be not afraid of them don't be afraid because god is with you right how do we not be rebellious by what open thy mouth and eat what we what god gives you you see, the scriptures compare to food. The scriptures compare to milk. The scriptures compare to meat. The scriptures com compare to honey. The scripture is food. Eat the word of God. Digest it so you may know the truth. And after that, open thy mouth and proclaim the gospel. That's what we're supposed to do. But guess what? They'll be rebellious. Lost people are very rebellious. If only they would get saved. Because salvation today is simple. Salvation today is by placing your faith and trust in the blood of Jesus for your salvation. Stop trusting your righteousness. Stop trusting what you can do. But trust on the finished work of Calvary. It is that simple. But of course there will be people here who, are, who will, uh, who will ve be very, very rebellious against this message. Right? And probably in the comment section, there's going to be a lot of people who say, Oh, you're supposed to speak kindly, speak with love, 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 right? Because they don't want to hear this. This is truth. This is what the Bible says. Hmm. But let's see what these rebellious children keep saying, you know. We're, we're going to see here, because the Bible tells us both accounts. Let's see what they will say. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 9, that this is rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Verse 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. You see, you know what people are doing now? People are prophesying smooth things. Oh, it's okay. God is love, right? God loves you. God loves you a lot. He loves you and your sin. Right? That's what they're prophesying. But the Bible says, uh, no. 
You want to find the love of God? You're going to have to find it at the cross of Calvary where Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. But if you don't go down that bloodstained path, the Bible says in John chapter 3, I think it's in 36, the Bible says, The wrath of God abideth on you. Psalms 5.5, 5, Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Well, I know a lot of people, no, uh, smooth things, smooth things. I want to feel good. You see, this is what this generation is like. They don't like to hear this. Nobody likes to hear this. But it's what the Bible said, right? You're either going to believe the Bible or you're not. Make up your mind. Are you going to believe these words? Because this word says, you know what? Fakers are going to say, oh, it's okay. God is love. God is love. And they take that all out of context. The love of God, according to that passage, is found at the cross of Calvary. You can't find it anywhere else. If you're lost, the Bible says the wrath of God abideth on you. All right? I'm not going to deceive you. You see you see what is equated with deceits? Smooth things. That is what it's equated with deceits in this, in this passage. All right? So... Are you going to listen to the word of God or are you going to reject it? The, the Bible says, hey, prophesy a smooth thing, smooth things. You know what? These people will accept the prophet if they say, oh, go drink alcohol all you want. Oh, that would be the prophet of the people for sure. You know, let's see here in Micah. Let's turn to Micah here because that's what the people want, right? Micah chapter 7. Well, what was it? Micah chapter 2, my bad. Micah chapter 2, verse 11. Notice Micah chapter 2, verse 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall be the prophet of this people. You see, and we have a lot of people doing that. You see, they'll accept whatever. Oh, this guy says I can get drunk? Yeah, this guy is telling the truth. Yeah, you know. Or if this guy, oh, you can drink alcohol? That's good to drink? Yes, I want to listen to that, right? Because it's smooth things. It's deceits, right? Is that what you're doing? Are you trying to get money from these people? Because there's people who do that. You know, there's people like, uh, what was it? Kenna Copeland and these pe kind of people out there. They're trying to, trying to gain money. By speaking smooth things, hey, do this, do that, whatever, right? Oh, God won't do it unless you allow him, right? You have the power, whatever, that kind of garbage. I'm telling you, man. But guess what? If I go out and I say, hey, you got to get saved by trusting the blood. If you don't get saved, the Bible says in here, you'll bust hell wide open. Oh, no, they won't accept me. But they'll accept someone who says, oh, you know what? You can drink wine all you want. You can drink strong drink. You know, you can drink alcohol. It's fine. Oh, they'll accept that person. That's no problem. Right? That's what this generation is like. We are in the last days of the church age. That's where we're at. We're the last days of the church age. This is how it's going to be, pal. This is how it's going to be. Let's let's take a look at Romans 16. Let's see these type of, what these type of people are. Romans 16. Romans 16, verse 17 to 18. Alright. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words. Notice this. Pay close attention. You don't know who are the bad people in the Bible? Notice this. These are people that by Good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You know how politicians get elected? You know, let's say a guy is running for president. As long as he kisses babies, right? Kisses babies on the forehead and, you know, goes out and says nice things. Oh, he'll get elected of the people. He'll be a prophet as such because he speaks good words and fair speeches. That what? Deceive. Deceive the hearts of the simple. You know one of the hardest things to do? Is to tell someone that they're deceived. It's much easier to deceive someone than to let them know that they're deceived. Right? That's how most people are. Whether it be for politics. Whether it be for anything under the planet. Uh, under the sun. Hmm. I wonder. That's what these people are doing. And the Bible tells us to mark them. 
You see, these type of people that go out deceiving people, mark them. Oh, that's not nice. Well, guess what? Truth is not nice. Truth is truth. And the Bible tells us to mark them, which cause divisions. And these are the same people that by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. That's what the Bible says. Amen? That's what the Bible says. Let's turn to a similar passage here. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4. We're going to look at verses 3 to 4. All right, we're here already. The Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, 4, 3, the Bible says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't endure doctrine. Doctrine? Doctrine divides. We should gather on love, not doctrine. You've heard of that garbage before? Yeah, they won't endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Hmm. You see, they will want to hear what they want to hear. You see, as we just read in Micah, if a prophet comes by saying, Oh, you can drink strong drink. Oh, he'll be a prophet of the people. Do wickedness. It's fine. Feel free to do it. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their, their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Right? A good fable that's out there is the story of the Septuagint. You should look into that. That's a huge fable that's being propagated in most co most colleges. Another fable out there that a lot of people like to do uh, like to say is that Jesus got drunk on alcohol, right? And that, and that people were getting drunk around with Jesus. A lot of fables are coming, man. A lot of fables. It's that they don't want to study the Bible. They have not sought, as we just read earlier, they have not sought the counsel of the Lord. You see, someone will come, you know. With the, with the fair speech that will look good, just like the Gibeonites from Josiah. It, hey, it, it looks promising. It looks like they're telling the truth, but they don't seek from the counsel of the Lord. You see, it don't matter if it looks promising. It don't matter if it looks good. What matters is, what did God say? What did God say? Seek the counsel of the Lord. But no, they don't want to do it. Forget it. They don't want to do it. You know, ain't that something? Amos 5.10. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. Notice. They hate him that rebuketh and negate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. You see, that's what a proper street preacher does. He's the one rebuking at the gate. He's the one there saying, listen, man, this world is going to send you to hell, man. You need to trust in the blood of Jesus for your salvation. If you don't, you're going to bust hell and burn forever. And that, hey, you know what? The Bible says they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They abhor him that speaketh uprightly. What's uprightly? Well, it's what the Bible says. Of course, there. Is, of course, most street preachers are going to be hated, especially today. Most uh, most street preachers are going to be abhorred. They're going to be made fun of, because they're speaking uprightly. They're telling the truth straight from the book, the book of the Lord. You don't have to guess which one is that. It's already been made obvious. Just something to think about. And for our last passage here, for a good example of dealing with these kinds of people, and I hope you are not one, but if you are. The Bible tells you you can get saved. And if you refuse that, you're going to bust hell, my friend. The choice is yours. It's completely up to you. Let's see here. Jeremiah 38, 4. Jeremiah 38. We're going to start with uh, verse 1. Hmm. Uh, verse 1. Then Shef, uh, Shef, Sheftiah, the son of Maiden, and Gedaliah, the son of Pasher, and Jukal, the son of Shemeli, and the Pasher, the son of Malachi, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoke unto all the people, saying, what was Jeremiah saying? Thus saith the Lord, he that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, but he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have his life 
for a prey and shall live. You see, there's some people out there. Oh, you can't say that people are going to die. You can't say that. You got to spread with love. Oh, this is love right here. Verse 2 tells you it's very loving because he's letting you know that if you don't, you are going to die. Now, I'm for a spiritual application today, if you do not get saved, you're going to bust hell wide open. You're going to burn. You're going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth forever and ever. Concept is still the same. Of course, it's a different kind of judgment, a different dispensation, but the spiritual application counts. Notice what he was saying. Thus saith the Lord, he that remaineth in the city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Look, look, look at verse 3. Thus saith the Lord, this city shall surely be given unto the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Verse 4. Therefore, notice what they're saying now because of what they just heard. Notice, what, no, no, notice, pay close attention. Verse 4, therefore the princess said unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. For thus he weakened the hands of the men of war that remaineth in the city, and the hands of all the people, and speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but to hurt. You know what, you know, you know what these people sound like? They sound like fairies. They sound like sissies, right? Because if I'm out there preaching the gospel, or if Brother Brent is out there preaching, or if any other street preacher out, out there is preaching the gospel, they're saying, oh, how can he say that? You're not supposed to say that. You're hurting people. You're... Hey, this is what these peasants, this is what these rebellious, lying children, according to Isaiah 30, are saying. Why you? If you say, oh, I'm not a rebellious, lying children, then why are you acting like one? Why are you acting like one? You sure look like one. Because you're sounding the exact same way as the princes. Notice what they're saying about Jeremiah. We beseech thee, let this man be put to death. Kill him. Crucify him. Those words ring a bell. Crucify him. You see, Jesus was the same way. He would say, you generation of vipers. Who, who, who shall, uh, how, how shall you escape from the damnation to come? Oh, Jesus, you should have never said that. And some people are like, well, only Jesus was right to say that. You're not allowed to say that. Oh, really? Well, the minor prophets did it. The major prophets did it. In fact, Paul said it all the time. He said, you fools, you slow bellies. And one passage in Hebrews, he would say, if God does not chastise, uh, chasten you as children, then you're not children, but you're bastards. That's what he said. Oh, Paul, you're hurting the people by these words. <laughs> you're hurting the people by these words. Notice, now I'm going to quote here. In speaking such words unto them, for this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. He's planning to hurt us with his word. You know, sissies, man. That's what's happening in this world. But again, you either choose to believe the Bible or you don't. You're either a Christian. If you're saved, you're blood bought by the child, uh, by the blood of uh, blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're saved. Or if not, you're lost. Have you trusted in the blood of Jesus for your salvation? If not, then you're going to hell, friend. That's where you're going. And if you are saved, if you're washed by the by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you're acting like this, why are you acting like this? The Bible tells you, after salvation, in Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created unto Christ Jesus, unto good works. We're supposed to be out there, spreading the gospel to other people. What are you doing, man? Why are you sitting there, uh, at the laptop, or wherever you're at, doing nothing for the Lord and grieving the Holy Spirit? Because that's what you're doing, if you're not proclaiming the word of the Lord. The Bible, in Ezekiel, called you rebellious. You're rebellious if you don't. Why are, you trying to, why are you trying to act like a heathen? You're saved. You're washed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to heaven. That destination is settled. I'm not saying you can lose your salvation. But what I'm saying is, man, is that if you're saved, why are you trying to act like a heathen for? This world is not your home. Hmm. Ain't that something? But overall, as the Bible says... In verse 10, which say to the seers, see not unto the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. You see, this is what these people want. Oh, wait a second here. Um, this is what these people want. 
They want the seats. They want to be lied to. That's what's happening here. Now, if you're a child of God, you're supposed to be joining the fight. You're supposed to be enlisted. Are you enlisted in the Lord's army? If you're saved, you are. So what are you doing there sitting on top of your gun, doing nothing? The Lord gave you a gun, right? He gave you a weapon. He gave you a sword. Here's a sword right here. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharpened than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder. You're supposed to use this sword to pierce, man. You're supposed to fight. What are you doing sitting like a sissy? Now that's if you're saved. And if you're not saved, if you have not trusted the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, my friend, you're going to hell. Oh, you can't scare me to get saved. I'm not scaring you. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Oh, you can't judge me. No, I'm not judging you. The Bible says he that believeth not is condemned already. I don't need to condemn you. You're condemned already, the Bible says. I'm just letting you know of that fact, right? You want to get saved or not? You want to go to heaven? You see, in this dispensation, in this time period we're living in, it's that simple. There's no gimmicks to it. Just realize you're a sinner. Realize that Jesus Christ died for your sins and put your faith and trust on the blood that he shed for you for your salvation. Once you put your faith and trust like that, bam, you're saved. That simple, buddy. Are you willing? This is the end of this message here. This is KJB Believers. And we'll be catching you guys on the next time. Bye.